Hi guys, so I'm bundled because it's 71 degrees and for most people that wouldn't be cold and yes 71 Fahrenheit uh, but for me that's cold so I am like all bundled up because I'm trying to enjoy the weather because before too long winter will be here and I won't be able to go outside for any amount of time for very long because uh, I am a wimp. Anyway, um... So I asked a question on Twitter recently, and to read it exactly word for word, um, I asked the ask, ask, asking autistics hashtag, actually autistic hashtags, uh, what is the one thing you wish you had known when you first discovered you were autistic? And there have been, you know, um, about about 300 comments. We might have gone above 300 comments by now on that of people um, just kind of sharing their experience uh, about what they wish they had known when they first discovered that they were autistic. Uh, and there's some really great um, comments there. And so there's a link to that uh, Twitter thread on my blog, neurodivergentrebel.com, if you want to check out and comment. Uh, but I thought I would make a video and share my own. Uh, so the thing I wish I had known uh, at the beginning, and I guess, you know, I don't think I could have known because it really took experience and new knowledge to really understand all of this, uh, would be sensory processing differences and how much of an impact uh, sensory processing differences have on me day to day. Um, before I really understood sensory issues, I just thought that I had chronic headaches and chronic nausea because I didn't understand that um, things like lighting could have an impact on me. I didn't know that fluorescent lighting literally would give, will give me a migraine within five or six hours, if not sooner. Um, you know, I didn't understand that if I go outside and squint too long, like I knew it was painful, but I didn't, I, I could get through the pain, and I, but I didn't understand, you know, the lasting impact that would have on my health and, you know, what that was really doing to me, um, because I'd never heard of sensory processing differences or sensory processing disorder. Uh, I'd never heard of that you know, before, so I had no idea, um, and since, you know, learning about how, how I have a lighting sensitivity, and then learning to protect my senses from lights that trigger and irritate them, uh, has been really life-changing, because I very rarely have, um, headaches now, I did have one recently and it was horrible. Um, and I also, you know, I'm not nauseous hardly ever anymore now. And, you know, a lot of times, like, doctors are trying to do things with foods. Uh, and it wasn't really a food thing. It was more of a neurological thing. So that wasn't really helping, like, switching all these foods. Although there are some foods that really attract my stomach. Uh, gluten is one of them and a few other things. Sugar really doesn't sit well with me. Um, but since I've started, you know, taking care of my senses and really minding my sensory needs, um, just my health overall has just improved. I feel so much healthier. I feel so much better. Um, and I just wish I knew I could feel this healthy. You know, most of the time I sleep better even. Um, so my life is just better now that I understand sensory processing and, you know, like if I'm going to go uh, into, instead of squinting in the light, I'm going to wear, um, you know, shades that block the light. Uh, you know, I, I understand now what, you know, sensory overload is uh, and, you know, I have experienced that usually, like I, for example, I had a migraine and it was to the point where every sound I heard or like anytime I like light in my eyes, 
uh, like I couldn't look at my phone screen for very long because it was just physically just so painful. And it was, I, I at one point was like, am I dying? I am in so much pain. I have, that is the most pain I've ever been in uh, from that in my life. But I know, you know, it was like too much input for my senses. So now it's like, I know, okay, well, I just need to shut my senses down for a while. I need to stop letting anything else go in there and close my eyes and lay down and be in the dark and relax. And, sh and I know to soothe my senses uh, to help them relax that if something like that has been triggered. But I didn't know that for a long time. Um, uh, the same thing, you know, with my, my stomach, uh, you know, I had, when I would have a lot of stomach problems, I just kind of thought, felt nauseous a lot, but it was just because, you know, I was, I would get a little bit of, is it called vertigo? It, when you're, you're kind of, like you feel like everything's moving a little bit, everything's a little spinny, you feel a little dizzy. It makes you kind of like, I don't drink, but like when you're drunk and everything spins a little bit and it makes you feel like you're going to toss your cookies, that's why I don't drink. I get that really bad really quickly if I drink, so I just don't. Uh, but so, you know, when I'm worn out or when I'm really tired or I'm not well rested, um, I get that feeling. And it's a very, it's kind of a sensory thing. And it can, you know, if I'm feeling that way, uh, sounds can really make me nauseous and smell. I can get to the point where smells that don't normally bother me will make me really nauseous. Uh, and then my sensory system kind of gets heightened. Uh, and I've noticed that, you know, that just kind of happens to me if I, if I'm sick or, you know, not well rested. And so I've also learned, um, the things that trigger me and the things That's the bus. Can you hear the bus? It's really loud. <clears throat> it's letting the air out. So I now know, um, you know, the things that trigger, you know, me and the things I need to avoid. And I, I'm able to take better care of myself. So I wish I knew all of that. Um, but I really, I couldn't learn it until I had the new lens and I had, you know, the terms and I had like researched and understood sensory processing and just sensory overload. Um, but so I guess that would be something that I would encourage people who are newly discovered to look into and to understand just how that affects them. Uh, because just understanding that and having that information has been really life-changing and very empowering for me. Uh, so anyway, guys, those are that's just my thoughts uh, and my th thing I wish I had known on the beginning of my discovery journey long ago. <laughs> uh, and if uh, you have your own comments, you know what what do you wish you had known? You know, just starting out, uh, let me know the thread below because I'm really loving this conversation. We can keep this going and if you want to check it out if you're on Twitter, uh, I'll put a link to that as well. Thank you guys. Anyway, uh, I'll talk to you next week. Bye! <laughs>